Good morning, friends. It's good to be together. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 16. And uh, yeah, happy Independence Day, right? Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow. No woos, no nothing. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, so we are coming to the end of Romans. How about that? Is that, is that maybe why the fireworks are there? Today is the last official chapter on Romans for, for this series. Not that we'll never open the book again, but if, if you're new with us this morning, we've been going through Romans for a year. And speaking of a year, today, July 3rd, is the anniversary of what? Yeah, I, my first day as pastor uh, preaching at Melbourne French Church as senior pastor was 21 years ago on July, I think it was July 3rd, somewhere around there. 21 years, so thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sure which. Uh, it's amazing how time flies, but it's also amazing to see God work through time. I had a conversation uh, last night with somebody uh, just because I've been in the community so long that I've gotten to know and just to be able to be there and talk with them on just a, a friendship level uh, and just connect to a story. It's the beauty about being in one place for a long time. A lot of good things happen. Uh, we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 16, which is the last chapter in the book of Romans. But before we get there, we're going to play a game. You ready? <laughs> There's always the suspicion as, what is he doing? So we're going to play a game. It's a simple game. There's some, an object going to appear on the screen, and you're going to say what it is. Now, you're going to compete with the people who are around you. So you've got to kind of figure out who's, who's on your competition here. You're competing against them. And so the, the goal is to say what you see fast, as quickly and as accurately as possible. So the answer to what is that is what? It's an apple, but... You, you get points for being quick and being the first person to say apple, but if you say a green apple or a Granny Smith apple, then you get more points. Make sense? So you're, you're competing each other, saying who can say what it is first. There's a point to this. It's not just because I've been here for 21 years and I do what I want. <laughs> but there's a point to this. So let's see how good you are. Are you ready? We can just skip this. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. Pretend that you're the youth group. Are you ready? Yeah. Hey. yeah, not paying attention. <laughs> Yellow banana with a green stem. All right, all right. Okay. How about this one? Bananas without this. Good one. Okay. Anybody say sliced bananas in a white bowl on a yellow cloth on a white table? All right. No, it's not an awe. It's a, it's a pug. It's a pug puppy. Pug puppy, right? So you're all for that, and you say, ooh, for this one. Ready? Ooh. <laughs> Baby kitty. Baby kitty. I saw a guy on his, on his, car, uh, on his car window. He said, uh, tell your cat. I said, S -s -s -s. <laughs> He just said, like, you know. Yeah, anyway. I thought it was funny. I'm not sure who's winning. Bethany is, Bethany is way faster than most of you, but, you know. So you do have, like, a PhD, yeah. 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 Ready? Ooh, more complicated. Anybody know where that is and how we can get there? Like, this afternoon? I know it's, like, 70 degrees there, maybe. Sound good? All right. A little bit, little bit trickier, and it's more and more complicated. You guys are getting quieter, come on. It's a, it's a wood plank path through a forest bog thing. There's probably an alligator in the water. Right, Mike? Right, okay. How about simple? Fine up. That looks good, right? How about this one? Cheese pizza. Put them together and you got? Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, so some people are like, pineapple pizza. They'll be like, eh, no, that should not happen, right? Okay, you're getting there. We're almost done, almost done. What this? A single pepperoni, right? A pickled pepperoni, and this is this. All right, so put them together, and you get, ready? I rang it to you more fast. I rang it. What you really thought you would see is this, right? Which is a pepperoni pizza, right? That is a pepperoni pizza, right? 
is it a pepperoni pizza or is it not a pepperoni pizza? Forrest, what is it? It's only, it's only, so it's not a pepperoni pizza. It's a cheese pizza with one slice of pepperoni, right? Right? Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, somebody, that's somebody whose son really, or daughter really likes pepperonis and they got to the pizza before you did. They don't like the cheese and the crust, but they like this. Somebody on the keto diet got to the, to the pizza before you did and they ate all the pepperonis up. Okay, let me ask you a question. If you could see 40 years into the future, okay, that's, that's a big statement, right? And your name was on a list of people who did something that changed the world to the kingdom of God. What, what does that do for you when you hear that? If, if you could see 40 years in the future and your name was in a list of names of people who changed the world for the kingdom of God, it was, it was a list of names that brought together people who were, were set apart, who brought together people who were divided, who, who on that list, because of that list of people, there was a great revival in the country. Would you, would you want to be on that list? If, if because, uh, because of that, because you were part of this, that not only was there revival, but there was a time of healing, and that we saw things like, like well, let's just say it, uh, people who couldn't speak all of a sudden praising in the name of the Lord, people who couldn't see, seeing things for the first time, people who couldn't walk, running. Would you like to be on a list of people that were a part of that movement? Kind of? How badly would you want to be a part of that list? I'm going to show you a list of names. I'm not going to read them to you just yet. Anybody know what these names are? Or who these people are? These are, these are, oops, these are people in the Bible. These are names of the Bible. How many recognize any of those names? Not, not very many names that just roll off the tongue. You don't, you see Mark on there. Uh, and maybe you see a couple others. But you look at those names, and, and those are, are a bunch of random names um, that, that you may or may not be able to pronounce. So what we come to at the end of the book of Romans, let me tell you, it's been one of the best things that, uh, that I've ever been a part of is just walking through Romans with you guys, um, just to see what God has for us and watch it lay out step by step what it means to be saved, what it means to walk into his church, what it means to overcome those, those things that, that still we battle with what it means to love one another, and what it means to be the church and understand his will for us. But as we get to the end of Romans, it seems anticlimactic. Because at the end of Romans, there's just this list of names. It's like, hey, say hello to this person. Make sure you greet this person. And so the way to explain, this happens several times in the end of letters in the New Testament. So you have your Bibles, right? So in the Bible, you have your Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the second... Uh, the last third of the Bible, the majority of that is, is letters that were written to people. So we call them books of the Bible, but really they started off as letters. Rich talked about that this morning, and he talked about the Corinth church, right? And so we look at that, we understand that these were letters written. And so as there's letters written, there's correspondence going on. And we get to the end of Romans, we get this whole chapter full of names and greetings. So, so how many of you remember this family? Yay. The Axels, yeah. Axel's moved from Idaho to Arkansas. Some people call it Arkansas, but I grew up in Kansas, so it's Arkansas. They moved to Arkansas in, in October of this last year, and we miss them. They're such an awesome part of our church. They, they really were good at nurturing uh, uh, just hospitality and community, sense of community within our church. And so we miss them a lot. And, and I think if they were here today, they would say, why are you guys sitting so far back? <laughs> Why are there like five rows empty in front? Let's, let's make a commitment to everybody next week. Once one pew forward, we'll get there. We've got to leave room for somebody to sneak in the back. So, so if the Axels, and I talked to them just yesterday, and I said if we had like a live call with them today, and I was talking to them, and we would share and updates on what they were doing. But as I was talking to them, I know they'd say, oh, are, are Jill and Derek there? And say hi to them, or um, say hi to Pastor Rich. Tell them we love them too. Uh, and, and tell everybody we haven't found a pastor that preaches nearly as good as you. Yeah, I think they say something like that. Um, they searched and searched and searched. Uh, I think Josh would ask about the men and, and, and the men's breakfast and about the men's trip going to Mexico in the September. I know Jamie would want to check in with all, all you ladies who she cares so much about. In fact, they said to say hi. There'd be greetings in general, but then there'd be those personal greetings, right? Those of you who know them well. 
What we see in the book of Romans as we get to the end, we see this list of names and these greetings that go on. And what we're looking at is, is we're understanding what's happening in the scripture. So let, let me ask this question. Who are some of the authors of New Testament books in the Bible? We know God is the ultimate author through the Holy Spirit. But what are some of the names of the books that are written, that the authors behind it? James is one, yeah. You got the Apostle Paul who wrote Romans. Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You got all those names, right? These, these are some of the names. Peter, Peter, Paul, James, John, Jude. You, have, you also have the coffee guy um, who wrote Hebrews. Yeah. But, but none of these people worked alone. We've been looking at, at, this, at this book, and we talked about the Apostle Paul as he's written these things, but in, in none of it was Paul working alone. The Apostle Paul, yeah, he spearheaded a lot of things. Peter spearheaded a lot of things. Was a part of a great movement. A lot of people uh, came to know Jesus through these men. But in the midst of it, they were never working in isolation. And we lose that. And we almost, and, we, and I know I do elevate Peter, Paul, and the others to this level that it's like, man, if only we had somebody like that. But it's not if only we had somebody like that, but if only we had a team like that. Because as we look at the book of Romans and we come to this end, we see that it's all about teamwork. We see many, many others are in the midst of this story that is going on. Romans is this fantastic book, this letter that just lays out things so wonderfully for us 2,000 years later. Astonishingly, still clear as day 2,000 years later. And, and yet, it's not just the work of one man working with God. And we don't see that in Scripture. We don't see the lone ranger working with God all by himself against all odds. There's always a team. Even Jesus had a team. Yeah, a bunch of people like you and I. Amazing. Many others helped. There were people who traveled. There were people who were teachers. There were local church leaders. There were people who helped financially in all that was happening in the church. There were missionaries alongside of Paul. There were people who were readers. There were people who were supporters. There were people who were friends, brothers, and sisters. Not everybody was literate, so you would have somebody go and take a letter to a church, and they would read that to the church. They were responsible for not just carrying the words, but also carrying the tone, the love, the prayer of all those who wrote it and all those who are part of it. As we see that Romans is not a work of just one person and God, but it is a work of a team working together following the call of God in their lives. And let's just take a step here to say there's a shout out to the women. Shout out to women in the Bible. So did you know that, that in Romans, it gives this long list, about half of them are women. Listed us, people who were integral, integral parts of what's happening in the New Testament church in Rome and everywhere else. Bibi's the first one mentioned. She gets the most credit. And, and she's the one who, who is understood to be the one who Paul entrusts to take this letter from where he is to Rome, that she will take to them, and that she will be the one that shares it. She's called a, a deaconess. There's, there's Mary, and there's Junia. Junia is called an apostle. And there are many women, many women mentioned because they're integral parts of the church and its mission. Women, if you've ever felt as a lesser than, you're missing out on what the scripture says. Because you're not. You're not lesser than. There are roles for both of us. And just like a healthy family needs a healthy mom and a healthy dad, so the church needs healthy men and healthy women, both following the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, strength, and using the gifts that God gives them. Amen? That may offend some of you, and I'm okay with that. Romans 16. Let's read this together. Now, the challenge would be to read this, and you're just reading through a list of names and things that don't make sense. But read it as if this is from the Axels, the Melville French Church, and God has done great things there, and there's all kinds of work happening there, and they want to write back and tell us everything that's happening and to communicate to us, this is what's happening in Romans 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in that city. I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I studied Greek for, for four semesters, but I don't know all the words. Uh, I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way of his people and to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Read also the church that meets at their house. 
Greet my dear friend Epinetus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Can you think about that being, you'd be the first person who came to know Jesus in an area. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow workers who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Statutes. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, shout out to the moms, who's been a mother to me too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Miris, and his sister in Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Get them, get all the names, there's no text. Do you hear just the connection? I'm gonna pause here, because I, I have a concern. And, and as I was preparing this week, it, it just it kept coming to this wall in preparing. And, and even last night, I was like, Lord, what is, what is this? Uh, the, my concern is that what I'm about to share, you could all sit there and smile and nod, and then we could leave unchanged. And I have, a, I have a big concern that that's what's gonna happen. I also have a concern that, that possibly something else could happen and, and you guys could react in such a way and then turn to me and ask questions and I wouldn't have necessarily the answers or the next steps for you. But as I was talking to Jesus about this even last night in preparing this, I just had this weight. So well, what is it? I said you need to share that. But there is that concern that sometimes we come we sing, we shake hands, we high five, all that stuff, put thousands of dollars into the offering plate, all those things you normally do. <laughs> and you walk away, back to the same thing. And friends, I don't, I don't want to walk away from Romans unchanged as a person or as a church. And I don't want to walk away from this list of names just thinking, yeah, that'd be nice. It's not what God has for us. There's a reason that these names are mentioned, not just in Romans, but in all these other letters. Because those people matter. Yeah, it's, yeah they're not Paul, yeah, they're not Peter, but they are essential to what's happening in the New Testament church. Do you understand that? That we wouldn't have a lot of this without all of these other names. What if in 40 years you could look ahead and you could see that you are a part of something that changed the world? for the kingdom of God? What if you're a part of a great revival? What if something you did made a difference in the lives of not just one other or two others or one family, but in countless others? I know you wouldn't have a statue somewhere in your name or anything like that, but, but you would be a part of this list of people who remember there was this movement this one time, and here's what happened. How many of you know who this is, who they are? Anybody? Last name is Booth. William and Catherine Booth. You know who they are? How about this? How about Joe the Turk? You know Joe the Turk? <laughs> How many know what this is? Salvation Army. Salvation Army began centuries ago. And it started with William Booth being convicted to not just sit in church and just do things as normal, but actually go to people and to take the word of God to them. And as he did, he saw people who were broken all over the place. He saw people who were addicted to substances. He saw people who were, uh, who were lost. He saw women who were trafficked into the sex slave industry. He saw all these things. And he was determined not to just sit and watch, but to do whatever he could to rescue them. Not just spiritually, but also physically. So he started the Salvation Army. He and, he and his wife started it. But when you look at it within just a short amount of time, there was a thousand people who were part of this army. People who just joined the same cause and went out into the streets. And, then, and, and as you know, the Salvation Army is all over the world today. Still doing the same thing. You may not see the street preaching, but it's still a direct part of what it is. It's changing the lives as best we can, spiritually, physically, emotionally. 
And so when you look at that, we have this concern that we are talking about, that concern that we would come here, that we would smile, and that we would nod and say, yeah, it was a good sermon. And we'd walk away and change. But I love the words of Catherine Booth. She said this, to better the future, we must disturb the present. So I'm here to poke you a little bit this morning and to, and to make you a little uncomfortable. Because I, I would love to see your names on a list someday of people who change the world for God's kingdom. Because because I'd like to take a little bit of credit, honestly, I mean, there's that part of me. But I'd love to see the world become a place where God's kingdom is advancing in ways that we haven't seen yet. And so this is the invitation, this understanding that, that, that there's this, every major movement in God's kingdom isn't something that, that happens with the movement of one person. There's revivals, there's missions, there's healing, there's times where there's just an outbreaking, like that song we sang, where the Spirit of God is poured out on a people, on a group, and it just caught fire, and it just spread, and it spread, and it spread, and changed. Have you heard of the Great Awakening? Other movements, they happen every so often, where a group of people come together, all with the same thing, and that is to say yes to whatever Jesus asks. Every major movement of God's kingdom had a body of believers who kept saying yes to what Jesus was asking of them. Kept saying yes over and over and over again. And that, that brings us back to our pepperoni pizza. Our slice of pepperoni pizza. You know, when you say yes to Jesus, and I hope you have, if you haven't said yes to Jesus and, and received the grace of God that forgives all your sins, past, present, future, that then seats you with Christ, that you then have peace with God because of what he's done for you. If you haven't said yes to Jesus yet, then do so today, right? Don't, why would you wait? Say yes to Jesus today. That's the first yes. But Jesus doesn't stop asking us questions after the first yes. But a lot of people, and, and maybe it's just in America, maybe it's not, but a lot of people are content with the first yes. And they fall back on that yes and say, yeah, I know I'm going to go to heaven someday because I said yes to Jesus. And I went up to that altar or I got baptized or whatever I did. And so I know that I know that I know that I'm going to be in heaven someday because I said yes to what God's done for me. And I believe that the only hope I have is Jesus. And that's awesome. That's wonderful. But that's one slice of your life. Guess what? Jesus wants the whole thing. He wants a whole lot of pepperoni in your life. Jesus wants the whole thing. Because when you give him the whole thing, when you keep saying yes to Jesus, and, and youth, I'm talking to you too. Because some of the greatest movements in our nation came not from old men, but from young men and women. Who said yes to Jesus and pushed the church into the next generation of what God was doing. Still is the truth today. I'm getting old. We need you. Saying the first yes to Jesus is huge, right? It's awesome. And again, if you haven't done that, today is the day. Do it. It's life-changing, eternity-changing, saying yes to what God's done, saying yes to forgiveness, yes to his grace. That's amazing. But the glory of God's work in you doesn't stop with forgiveness. I think you've heard me say these things before, right? But let's not walk away on change day. Let's not walk away and say, yeah, that was good, and then go back to the normal. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good, oh man, I put you all asleep with pepperoni pizza? Wow. Created in Christ Jesus to do good. Wow. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. The New Living Translation says it this way. And let's read this like we're alive. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. He has good things for you, and he planned them already. And he's waiting for you to say yes to the next thing. He's not waiting for you to say yes to being regular, to attending church. Maybe that's your first step. Maybe saying yes to, to reading your Bible, yes. But saying yes to opening your mouth and actually sharing Jesus with another person. Yes to taking a little bit more time to pray and to wait on the Lord in the morning. Yes to just forgiving the person who you just can't forgive yet saying, yes, I'm going to forgive them now. Jesus is waiting for us to say the next yes. This is a call, and the call is simple. Keep saying yes to Jesus. And I heard this recently. The biggest challenge is not to say yes when God calls us, but to say yes before he asks the question. 
Have you ever seen that? When a man proposes to his girlfriend, she's been waiting a long time, <laughs> and he gets down on a knee, and before he even starts, she's like, yes, 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 right? What if, what if our attitude towards Jesus was as soon as he turned his gaze towards us, we were saying, yes, whatever you, whatever you call me. Even if it's suffering, even if it's my life, even if it means loss for me, yes. Yes, Jesus, because I want to go wherever you want me to go. It's easy to say, challenging to do. I so shared the quote from Catherine Booth. Here's a quote from William Booth, who spent his life serving others. And this is what he said just a few months before he passed away. While women weep, as they do now, I will fight. While children grow hungry, as they do now, I will fight. While men go to prison, in and out, in and out, as they do now, I'll fight. While there's poor lost girl upon the streets, where there remains one dark soul without the light of God, I'll fight, I'll fight to the very end. My hope is that our words would be the same. And I don't know what the fight is in front of you that Jesus is calling you to, but I want you to say yes to it. I don't want you to say yes to just smiling and nodding and saying good sermon or, or participating in musical worship. I want you to say yes to Jesus in every aspect of your life. And that's where we're going to stop. There's a list of names of people who changed the world, who are part of the writing and the work of the church in Rome and everywhere else. And because of them, we have this work we've seen. And it's something that has impacted the world and impacted our church over the last 2,000 years. Only with God is something like that possible. Friends, God has something like that for you too. Don't underestimate it. Man, woman, educated, not, whatever it is, wherever you're at, God can use you if you say yes. And again, say yes. And again, say yes. I'm a father, yes. I say it again, yes. I say yes to your gift of salvation. I say yes to your Holy Spirit, I say yes to growing to know you more. I say yes to using my life to bless others. I say yes to the call you have for me, even if it isn't what I expect. Now, normally I would go to the next part of the prayer, but I just want to sit here and let you look at those words. I want to see for you, is that a yes? I want you to read those words on your own, not out loud, but just let those words saturate with you and, and see, are you willing to say each and every one of these yeses? Pray together, Abba, Father, yes, I say it again, yes. I say yes to your gift of salvation. I say yes to your Holy Spirit. I say yes to growing to know you more. I say yes to using my life to bless others. I say yes to the call that you have for me, even if it isn't what I want or expect. Father, give me a spirit of willingness to follow you. Give me special moments of treasured time with you so that I can remember those. Friends, I, I put that in there because for me, when I struggle to say yes, God reminds me of the times that I have and that he's been with me. And so it just makes it all the easier to say the next yes. Give me your courage, Jesus, but also please give me your forgiveness when I fail. Help me to say yes to your church, to take steps to love those around me. And all this, may your kingdom come. Amen. Friends, I don't know what the Lord's laying on your heart, but let me lay out some scenarios. Perhaps God is telling you today that you need to forgive somebody, that you need to show the mercy to somebody else that he's willing to show you. If so, say yes. Perhaps today God is telling you, stop just showing up and start stepping out. Don't just show up and be fed, but step out and feed others. If that's so, then say yes. Perhaps God has somebody on your mind and your heart who you know and you love and you want them to know Jesus, but you're just scared that you're going to mess it up. Say yes to trusting that he will give you the words. Perhaps he's calling you to step out and go somewhere else and serve the Lord there in a mission field or maybe to go into helping out in a way here to be somebody who is in front of the scenes or behind the scenes 
or, or doing the work of God's kingdom elsewhere in this community, perhaps you're the one that's going to help us understand how we can reach and minister to people in our community that we just don't quite know yet. Say yes. Perhaps your home is struggling. You need to say yes to laying down your pride and serving your spouse or your children. Perhaps you need to say yes to following along with your parents and working with them instead of against them. Father, give me a spirit of willingness to follow you. Give me a special moments of treasured time with you. Give me your courage, but also please give me your forgiveness when I fail. Help me to say yes to you, to your church. Take all the steps to love those around me. In all this, Lord, may your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord God, we do pray these things. And Lord, I realize that at this moment, I am letting go of this and placing this in your hands. And, and in the work of your spirit, Lord, continue to stir up our hearts and stir my heart to know what you're asking me to say yes to, to asking, asking you to tell me where to lead next. Help us, Lord, to be faithful, to follow you wherever you may lead. We love you, Jesus. We praise you and we thank you in your precious and holy name. We say yes and amen. Amen.